which is part three of principles of electronic exchanges. In part two, we have started discussion about the detailed discussion on the subsystems of electronic exchanges or SPC exchanges. We have so far discussed in part two, two subsystems, that is one is about the termination part, the other one is about the switching network. Now we will discuss about the third subsystem known as switching processor. The switching processor is a special purpose real-time computer designed and optimized for dedicated applications of processing telephone calls. It is a special purpose computer for taking care of real-time operations and exclusively for tackling the or processing the telephone calls. It has to perform certain real-time functions which have to be performed at the time of occurrence and cannot be deferred, such as reception of dial digits and sending of digits in case of the transit exchange. So it has to perform real-time functions. So some two examples are given here for real-time functions. One is reception of dial digits. As you are dialing the digits, it has to process and accordingly send a ring to the called subscriber. So it cannot be deferred. Whenever you are dialing, the digits have to be accepted and analyzed and accordingly it has to identify the called party and send a ring. And similarly, sending of digits in case of transit exchange. Suppose the exchange under consideration we are discussing, discussing is transit exchange. So it has to receive the digits from one exchange and transmit the digits to the destination exchange. So there should not be any um, time difference. It has to happen whenever the occurrence of digits dialing is taking place. The block schematic of switching processor consisting of central control program store is shown in figure. This is the block schematic of the switching processor. So uh, in this uh, system, subsystem, we have some three different stores. They are known as program store, translation store, data stores connect, connected to central control processor, which in turn is connected to switching network. We will study one by one. Now, subsystems of SPC exchanges and switching processor. Central control processor, this one, central control processor, is a high-speed data processing unit which controls the operation of the switching network. So it is a high-speed processor which has to control the operations of the switching network further connected. Then we will come to the three different stores. First, in program store, sets of instructions called programs are stored. So it is very much known to you. So sets of programs are stored in the program store. The programs are interpreted and executed by the central control. So these programs are executed by the central control processor. Next, coming to the 
third store, second store, this is translation store. Translation store contains information regarding lines. Example, category of calling and call line. Then, routing code, charging information, etc. Category of uh, lines, the, either it may be calling or called, they are uh, categorized like a normal subscriber, very important VIP. VIPs means you can say ministers, chief minister, or MPs, MLAs, or the um, top bureaucracy. They are all categorized as VIP subscribers or customers. Similarly, we are having another category known as coin collection box. So perhaps everybody may be aware by inserting the coin, you can speak to the card party. Similarly, PBX, private branch exchange. So some organizations for their internal communication and also for uh, other speaking with the other subscribers in the exchange or for trunk calls, whatever it is. So PBX is generally meant for, for uh, internal communication of an organization, like a company or something like a college, something like that. Then the third one is data store. Data store provides for the temporary storage of transient type of data required in processing telephone calls, such as digits dialed by the subscriber, busy bar ideal states of the lines and trunks. So it is a something as temporary storage, which has to process the transient data. So examples they have given for processing the telephone calls, such as the digits died by the subscriber, busy for ideal states of the lines and trunks. Suppose a line, subscriber line is busy, it should be known. So busy tone is to be sent to the calling subscriber. If it is ideal, so the connection is to be provided. Similarly, this, applicable, this is applicable both for not only for lines, subscriber lines, and for trunks as well. Data store is a temporary memory wager, whereas translation stores and program stores of semi permanent type. So these two, this program store and translation store, they are semi permanent in nature. This is the uh, temporary nature. The information in the semi-permanent memories does not change during the processing of the call, but the information in the data store changes continuously with origination and termination of each call. So the data here always changes along with origination and termination of each and every call, whereas the data in these two stores is semi-permanent in nature, which may not change during the processing of the call. Now, we will look into the fourth sub system of electronic exchanges indicated by four, they are known as switching peripheral equipment, which we try, uh, understood to some an extent in a non-detailed way. Let us look into the contents of the information regarding switching peripheral equipment. The time intervals in which the processor operates is in the order of microseconds. While the components in the telephone switching section 
operate in milliseconds if the switching network is of analog type so now we are considering the time intervals required for various operations as far as the processor is concerned so it is only in the order of microseconds but whereas in the switching uh, section this this one the switching section so it operates in milliseconds if it is an analog switching network or a change of course digital means there is no such a, a difference so one side the processor operates in microseconds other side the switching network operates in milliseconds there is a speed difference between these two networks the processor and switching network the equipment known as switching peripheral is the interface between the two equipments that is processor and switching section working at different speeds so the switching peripherals indicated here under item 4 so that is scanner distribution distributor and marker so the interface between the high speed processor and low speed switching network the interface equipment acts as a speed buffer as well as enables conversion of digital logic signals from the processor to the appropriate electrical signals to operate relays and cross points okay is a speed buffer mainly the purpose is to take care of the speed differences between the switching network and the central control or the processor scanner signal distributor and marker fall under this category of devices now we understood there are three switching peripherals namely scanner distributor marker we will try to understand a little bit more about each and every switching peripheral first we will try to understand about the scanner scanner the purpose of the scanner is to detect and inform central control of all significant events bar signals on the subscriber lines and trunks connected to the exchange so it has to inform or detect and inform the central control of all the significant events bar signals on the subscriber lines or on the uh, trunk lines connected to the exchange these signals may be either continuous or discrete it may be analog or digital the equipments at which the events bar signals must be detected are diverse in nature so the equipments at which events bar signals happens must be detected are diverse in nature they are not uniform one side um, they have different uh, um, diverse nature the equipments are all not of same type okay terminal equipment terminal equipment is for subscriber lines and inter exchange trunks so we are using terminal equipment that is the first subsystem for uh, connecting the subscriber lines and trunks common equipment such as dtmf dual tone multi frequency or mf digit receivers what we have studied multi frequency digit receivers and inter exchange signal receivers bar senders are connected to the lines and trunks so we also connect this common equipment to the um, exchange in view of the wide diversity in types of lines trunks and signaling the scanning rate that is 
the frequency at which scan points are read depends upon the maximum rate at which events bar signals may occur so the scanning rate depends upon from where it is getting the signal on type of the circuits it may be from lines it may be from trunks or it may be from signaling systems here one example they have given to so that uh, we can better appreciate the point for example on a subscriber line with decoding pulse signaling that is pulse dialing with 1 is to 2 make break ratio the necessary precision required for the pulse detection is in the order of 10 milliseconds while other continuous signals that is clear off hook etc on the same line are usually several hundred milliseconds long and therefore the same high precision is not required so here you see the pulses are at a rate of 10 milliseconds okay the speed at which it is to be detected is in the order of 10 milliseconds similarly other signals like clear clear means when you complete the call and you disconnect your telephone so the call conversation indicating the call conversation the circuit is to be released that is called clear signal and half hook half hook in the sense you have lifted your handset for dialing a number called subscriber so you have to get the dial tone so it is to be detected so this uh, uh, continuous signals like clear off hook uh, like these two examples so they can they are not that much fast so it takes a time of several hundred milliseconds so here that much precision is not required to detect new calls while complying with the dial tone connection specifications each line must be scanned about every 300 milliseconds so the scanning rate to detect the signals and significant events should be every 300 milliseconds within 300 milliseconds entire scanning process is to be completed so further they have within the example they have given another example or scenario it means that in a 40000 lines of change this is considered as a normal size of electronic exchange 5000 orders are to be issued every 300 milliseconds assuming that eight lines are scanned simultaneously so he has taken one example of 40k lines at change so the orders to be executed is for 40000 lines at change is about 5000 here the assumption is eight lines are scanned at a time so 8 into 5000 which comes to 40,000. The time available for this scanning all the 40,000 lines at a rate of 8 lines as a single unit, 8 lines at a time, is 500 orders and the time available is 300 milliseconds. Within 300 milliseconds, all the 400 sorry 40000 lines are to be scanned then let us discuss about the marker okay switching peripheral 
type marker. Marker performs the physical setup of the call and release of the call of the or the paths to the switching network under the control of the central control. For everything, central control is the brain behind. So marker takes care about the setting up and releasing of the paths or the connections with the help of the switching network. A path is physically operated only when it has been resolved in the central control memory. So the path is established provided there is some reservation for that call. Okay, this reservation business and all we will discuss subsequently. So just like you have a reservation in your train for birth or seats, then only you can enter the reservation booking. So this path connection between calling and called party can happen provided there is an advanced reservation in the central control memory for this connection. Similarly, paths are physically released before being cleared in the memory to keep the memory information updated with service switching network. So the paths to be released for clearing the memory and to keep the memory information updated about the free network elements and occupied network elements. Every time it is to be updated in the about the switching network. Depending upon whether the switching is time division or space division, marker either writes information in the control memory of time or space stages. So if it is a space division switch, so the control memory writes the information in the space stage. If it is a time division, so the information is written in the time stage. So depending upon the switching network you are using, accordingly uh, the information is written in either in time space or space stage. Now we will come to the third switching peripheral which is known as distributor. Distributor acts as a buffer between high speed low power central control and relatively low speed high power signaling terminal, terminal circuits. So it has to act as a buffer between two sub sections they have given. One is the processor side. It is a very high speed but low power as far as central control is concerned. If you see about the signaling equipments, they are relatively low speed but high power. So it has to act as an intermediary between high speed processor and low speed signal system. High speed processor is of low power nature, whereas the low speed signal terminals are of high power nature. So it has to act as a buffer. A signal distributor operates or releases electrically latching relays in trunks and service circuits under the direction of the central control. So it is another activity. So it has to operate and release electrically latching relays that are available in trunks and service circuits. Then, so we will study about another 
aspect of the switching network which is known as bus system so here i have shown in blue color so this is the common path for different network elements or subsystems so if we, if we, all the network elements are connected somehow or other to this path it is something like a highway coming from different lanes let us go through the contents about this bus system various switching peripherals these are the switching peripherals number 4 so scanner distributor marker are connected to the central processor by means of a common system so these three are connected to central processor so by means of a bus then what is bus a bus is nothing but a group of wires on which data and command pulses are transmitted so command pulses are transmitted on this group of lines which is technically known as the bus so where the uh, some information exchange has to take place they have given one various sub units of the switching processor so switching processor got its own sub units so the data flow between various sub units of switching processor happens via this bus and also the data exchange has to happen between switching processor and switching peripherals so this is the switching processor these are the switching peripherals so data exchange between these things has to happen via this bus this is the common path bus means nothing but a common path like our road rail the common bus system avoids the costly mess type of interconnection among various devices the advantage of this bus concept of common path is to avoid the costly arrangement of mesh for interconnecting them so any network element as we all know from our basic knowledge about networking mesh is the best available option for interconnecting various network elements and reliability will be more but at the same time it is costly so via media the bus will serve the purpose so here there is no problem with bus arrangement or we can manage our switching systems so we adopt as a cost effective method instead of going for mesh type of connection which is prohibitively costly and not required also technically not required bus will do the purpose then we will try to understand little bit about uh, line interface circuits signaling and voice transmission on the subscriber lines involve a number of functions performed by the exchange these functions are performed by an interface at the exchange end known as the loop interface for subscriber lines so the signaling and voice transmission on the subscriber lines involves different functions so this happens with the help of what is known as loop interface for subscribers or subscriber loop interface some in digital networks and some in both so the subscriber line interface is required some for exclusive for uh, analog and some for uh, digital and some for 
common, either it may be analog or digital, these interfaces are required for subscriber to make calls and to speak with the called party. The complete sets of functions are better known by an acronym BVO or SCHT. Okay, the acronym for all the subscriber interface functions are um, designated with an acronym known as BVO or SCHT. So each a uh, letter signifies one function, one interface function. So we will study all these functions in nutshell. B stands for battery field. Then the second letter, O stands for overall voltage production. The name itself gives you an idea. What is the meaning of it? The R, the third letter, indicates ringing. So subscriber should get ring. Then S stands for supervision, supervision of the call. C for coding, C for coding. What is coding? We will see. Then H for hybrid, this also will start. C for testing purpose. Okay, we will study a little bit about all these subscriber line interface interfaces. Battery feed and ringing functions are already known. We have already studied about why battery is required. So to power up your telephone from the central telephone exchange. And you have to get a ring so that you can answer the call. This we have already discussed. Power voltage production is meant for protection of the equipment from lightning strikes and power line surges. So this over voltage production helps in avoiding the damage due to lightning and similarly power line surges. Suppose some power lines are swapped, cut off and they have fallen on telephone lines. So high power, high currents will be carried through the conductors either to the subscriber equipment or to the telephone exchange. So we have to make an arrangement for protecting against over voltage. So this is about over voltage function. Then the supervision function. Supervision function is for detection of off hook condition. So when you are lifting the telephone, so the network should detect that you have lifted the telephone and a dial tone is to be given to you. This is known as supervisory function for off hook condition, for lifting the telephone condition. Then coding. Coming to coding, coding is exclusively used for digital switching. Why it is exclusively for digital switching means in digital switching, the signals are processed and switching takes place in the switching network through binary digits. So analog signals will not be accepted. Whereas the signals you are getting from the user on subscriber line that is copper pay is of analog nature. So the signals that are coming from the user subscriber to the telephone exchange are to be converted into digital format for switching and processing. So similarly, whatever the uh, digital signals that are emanating from the exchange uh, cannot be transmitted on your analog transmission media, that is the subscriber line, or rather to say the copper wire. So before they are ported on the copper wire towards the subscriber from the exchange, 
the digital signals are to be converted back to analog nature. So this A to D and D to A conversion is required. This is a type of model. So which converts analog signals to digital signals and digital signals to analog signals. When you see from subscriber to exchange, it is analog to digital conversion. When you see from switching side to the switch to the subscriber, it is digital to analog conversion. Hybrid is for digital exchange. Once again, this function is also mainly for digital exchange and for long distance transmission also, for inter exchange communication also, which requires receive and transmit signals on separate two wire circuits. As a matter of fact, though the signal from the user is coming and going to the user on two wires, internally within the telephone exchange, it happens on four wire basis. Four wire basis, what I mean to say is, two wires are used for trans path, transmitting the path, and two wires are used for receiving path. But from subscriber, you are getting two wires only. So it has to be converted into four wires. The process of converting the two wire signal path into two separate trans and receive paths, that is two wire to four wire conversion takes place with the help of what is known as hybrid. So the purpose of hybrid is for conversion of four way to two way or two way to four way vice versa then test function enables forward test of the subscriber loop line so you have to sometimes many a time whenever some fault occurs so it is necessary to test whether the subscriber line is okay or meeting all the electro electrical parameters or not so there should be some arrangement for testing arrangements. So that is also available in the line interface circuits. Then having said all these functions about BOR, SCHT, now because of the improvements in electronics, so we have a single chip arrangement for all these functions. Let us go through the content here. A single chip interface called subscriber loop interface circuit slic is now available now means with the advent of electronics exchange electronic exchanges with the development of electronics and circuitry is now available that performs all the interface functions required for an electronic exchange so all are all these functions whatever we have enumerated are incorporated in a single chip, electronic chip, so which is known as SLID, SLIC, SLIC, Subscriber Loop Interface Circuits. So this one single circuit with a chip will take care of all the above said functions. Then some more interfaces we will discuss. We will discuss about the interfaces pertaining to transmission and signaling interfaces. So let us look into it. Transmission interface is required between the analog trunks and digital trunks. Individual or multiplex such as A to D and D to A converters Yes, they are known as codecs, code and decoders. So when you are transferring the signal or information between analog trunks and digital trunks, so there should be in telecom scenario, in the initial days of evolution of electronic exchanges, there used to be some part in analog networking and some part in digital trunking. So what you have to do, the analog trunks should be made compatible to uh, digital trunks for in a transit location or in the transit exchange. 
or in trans transmission network center. Similarly, when the signals are coming on digital trunks, when the destination is on analog trunks, so there should be the digital signals are to be converted back to analog formats suitable for carrying on analog trunks. So they are nothing but analog to digital or digital to analog converters, which we call generically, generic name is codecs, codes, code and decoders. These may be provided on per line basis or per trunk basis or on the basis of one per 30 speech channels. Okay, so this uh, uh, transmission interfaces that a uh, codex can be provided on per trunk base or per line base or sometimes for a group of lines. We have uh, studied a little bit in the second part about the PCM. Uh, there also I said we'll be mostly discussing about 30 channel PCM. So 30 circuits put together forms one unit 30 channel PCM. So there also so this interface are required from analog trunks to digital trunks. PCM is digital format. Then we should have signaling interface that is the signals that are coming to the exchange. A typical telephone network may have various exchange systems, manual, Strouger, crossbar, electronic, each having different signaling schemes. In such an environment, an exchange must accommodate several different signaling codes. So, in the initial stage of the evolution, so at some part we used to have still manual exchanges. In some part, we used to have Strouger exchange. In some exchanges, we used to have crossbar type. Some exchanges, particularly in uh, bigger towns and cities and metros, we used to have electronic exchanges. So it is a transition. So in, during this transition, the source to destination may have to pass through different switching networks of either manual, Strouger, crossbar, or electronic. All are not electronic. So therefore, the signaling system also differs. So when I, therefore, the action must accommodate several different signaling codes. This is achieved with the help of signaling interfaces. Now we will study a little bit about the signaling. Initially, all signaling between automatic exchange was decodic, that is pulse dialing. That is, telephone numbers were transmitted as trains of 1 to 10 pulses and each train representing one digit. So in decodic dialing, so we used to have a train of pulses. If I dial digit 2, there will be 2 pulses. If I dial digit 9, there will be 9 pulses. If I dial digit 0, there will be 10 pulses. To increase the speed at which calls could be set up and to improve reliability of signaling, multi-frequency <coughs> signaling system was introduced. This we have studied. To speed up the signaling, so we have, a, we have gone for MF signaling. In this system, each signal is transmitted as a combination of two out of a group of, say, sound frequencies. So we have studied in detail about MF signaling. So each digit represents two frequencies, one frequency in the lower frequency band, one in the upper frequency band. We have shown one matrix and R. 2 by 7. Okay. In both decodic and multi frequency methods, the signals for each call are sent over a channel directly associated with the inter exchange speech transmission circuit used for the call. This method is termed as 
channel associated signaling cas so how these signaling either pulses or frequencies are sent along with the voice path this is the first initial method we have adopted so since signaling is sent along with voice this is known as channel associated signaling cas okay subsequent development led to another type of signaling this signaling we will exclusively discuss in one of our ensuing lectures at a later stage recently a different technique has been developed known as common channel signaling so nowadays we are all working on ccs signaling common channel signaling that means voice path and speed signaling path can be different so voice can be in one trunk of uh, one trunk consisting of 30 channels pcm so signaling may be in another trunk or pcm so both need not follow the same path why uh, the signaling path can be different from the voice path but the source and destination remains the same let us go through the contents in this technique all the all the signaling information for a number of calls is sent over a signal link that is on a signaling pcm independent of the inter exchange speech circuits so it is no way connected with your speech like cas in cas channel associated signaling the signaling also sent in the voice path only on the same direction and in the same ops but here it can follow different it is independent of speech there is no direct link between signaling and speech so vijayawada to bombay you are dialing means so signal can pass through through different exchanges whereas different paths and speech can follow some other path but the source and the destination remains the same when from vijayawada i am making a call to bombay subscriber so bombay subscriber will get the ring but the signal path may be different with reference to the voice path when uh, when i speak with the bombay card subscriber in ccs signaling higher transmission rate can be utilized to enable a change of much a change of much larger amount of information since ccs signaling is of high speed in nature and it has got some advanced features it enables the exchange of much larger amount of information exchange this results in faster call setup introduction of new services like abbreviated dialing and more retrials and ultimately accomplishing higher call completion rates so the beauty of the ccs signaling will help you so many uh, advanced uh, features which we will discuss in a separate lecture and uh, it also facilitates uh, providing new services abbreviated means shortcut dialing this we will discuss separately okay so it helps in fast call setup also there are so many advantages and there is a separate uh, discussion for us uh, Uh, about uh, the signaling itself where we discuss in detail about ccs with more emphasis on ccs signaling which is in work at present moreover it can provide an efficient means of collecting information and transmitting for network management traffic engineering so this ccs signaling helps in better network management and better traffic engineering then we have data processing peripherals actually i have shown as uh, sub network element 6 uh, okay whatever the para number it may be this is about the data processing peripherals like videos and all that we will discuss 
the following basic categories of data processing peripherals are used in operation and maintenance activities of a telephone exchange number 1 man machine dialog terminals like tele typewriter and vdus are used to enter operational oper uh, operator commands issue commands with the help of ttu and vdus and to give out low volume data concerning the operation of the switching system we give with the commands for the operation of the switching systems with the help of this data processing peripherals these terminals may be local that is within a few tens of meters of the exchange or remotely located we in the introduction itself we studied the about the electronic exchanges they can be operated sitting at the same exchange or in a central exchange also so that is what he, he has told within a few meters means within the same exchange or it may be somewhere else in the centralized exchange maybe one exchange for the entire district also can perform the centralized control these peripherals have been adopted in the switching systems for their ease and flexibility of operation special purpose peripheral equipment is sometimes employed for carrying out repeated functions such as subscriber line testing where speed is more important than flexibility so some special purpose peripherals are used uh, tasks like subscriber line testing where speed is more important than the flexibility then high speed large capacity data storage peripherals so they are we have to store the exchange data all the call data records everything they are carried out on magnetic tape drives magnetic disk disk units are used for loading software in the processor memory so you have to load the information like the software processor memory all these things for that purpose we take make use of magnetic tape drives magnetic disk units and to take the backup of the exchange data or the information and the call data records also so we will use the large capacity data storage peripherals maintenance peripherals such as alarm announcements and special consoles are used primarily to indicate that automatic maintenance procedures have failed and manual attention is necessary so we use maintenance peripherals which indicates so which may give some announcement in the control center or in the main central exchange so uh, indicating some problem so some announcement may be given indicating so and so uh, problem has occurred and also um, automatic some maintenance uh, processes if they are failed so you are doing regular maintenance tasks so it has failed so you should be indicated the technical personnel available for the centralized maintenance should know what has happened what has gone wrong with a specific exchange the main exchange itself or any dependent exchange under its control but wherever any problem occurs it will be displayed on the one visual display board so like lcd display you will get the failure alarms indications so let us conclude about the principles of electronic exchanges the electronic exchanges work on the principles of stored program control they work on the principle of spc 
all the call processing functions are performed on the basis of pre-designed program which is stored in the memory of the central processor. So all these processing functions are based on the pre-designed program and they are stored in the memory of central processor. Though the initially designed electronic exchanges had single centralized processor, the control has been decentralized, providing dedicated microprocessor control subsystems for improved efficiency and security of the system. This also we have discussed. So instead of totally centralizing the activity, we have decentralized subsystem wise for better security and better maintenance and reliability. The modular architecture adopted in electronic exchanges also aids in the future expansions because we are adopting modular architecture with subsystems in electronic exchange. It helps for any future expansion of the exchange capacity or any other services. So this completes our discussion, these three parts completes our discussion about the principles of the electronic exchanges or the SPC exchanges. So with this, I conclude this session. Thank you very much.